I think, uh, I mean, so many things appealed to me about playing Bianca. First and foremost, I think getting to collaborate again with all the fantastic folks that I get to in this, most especially Michael. Obviously, this go around, he's also my director and my co star. And we've been, you know, such good friends throughout this journey. So getting to re team with him. But I think the thing that interests me so much about Bianca, I guess, is sort of her heart, you know? Um, these films obviously are a lot about family. And I think the ways in which she prioritizes family, what they mean to her, and also, you know, throughout the course of the films that she's constantly trying to understand sort of who she is in the world, who she wants to be, and, and you know, her art and her dreams. And I think those are things that I certainly relate to, and I think so many viewers do too. I think Creed Three makes so much sense for him. First of all, I think him directing makes sense. He's been working arguably his whole life because he started as a child actor. And I think when you have the benefit of, of working with so many incredible people, you learn a lot. And so him getting to really, you know, use all of the knowledge that he's gained over the course of his career in, in the process of directing feels seamless and like it was eventual for him. But I think particularly on these films because he knows the character so much and he knows the world so much. And, you know, for the third installment, I think you're always trying to figure out what can we do that's new inside of this story. And so having Mike also, you know, be at the helm, I think, is something that adds a freshness to the universe now. The truth is when we make these movies, the folks that you're making them with for that amount of time, particularly for a director, you're on a film for a couple of years and those folks really become your family. And so I think he has the kind of spirit to bring a group of people together to make them feel seen and, and taken care of. Um, and then I think he's incredibly disciplined. He's always been with these films. It takes a tremendous amount of preparation with the physicality especially, but getting to see him sort of take that spirit of approaching the work in an almost athletic way to take that into directing um, was just an honor to get to watch. I think what's been so tremendous about watching the relationship between Adonis and Bianca grow over the course of the eight years we've been making these films is Mike and I, our relationship has, has grown and changed in the sense that I feel like when we first started making these movies, we look back at photographs and we, first of all, like look so much younger, which I think is not just a, <laughs> an aesthetic thing. I think it has to do with us like still not quite being formed in terms of the kind of artists that we necessarily wanted to be or what we wanted to do, not just in this industry, but like with the time that we have on this earth with our lives. And I think now we come into the film as Adonis and Bianca now with a with a family and a car careers behind us and ahead of us. And I think Mike and I as people have such a more founded sense of, of who we are and, and what we want to do. And to get to see that growth and also support each other throughout the eight years and that growth has been really such a gift. I think family means everything to Bianca. Uh, you know, a facet of her, I guess, character and something that we haven't outright explored in the films is she has a sort of fractured relationship with her family. And so I think the idea of chosen family is something that feels really important to her. And I think, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. When we, when we don't have the benefit of, of having a close and stable relationship with our family, we invent families around us. And I think what's been so beautiful to see for Bianca is over the course of these films, her get to make her own family, which I think for, for a person that, that has a sort of splintered relationship with their family, that means so much. I think there's always sacrifices, but I, I also think that there's a kind of gift that your children hopefully give you, which is a, a, a newfound sense of purpose. So I think they illuminate your dreams and invigorate your dreams. And so, for me, I don't think that Bianca has necessarily given up anything because of Amara. I think instead she's found new 
things that are imbued with a sense of importance when they they weren't. I think your dreams, when they're just connected to, to you, sometimes can feel really shallow. And I think your dreams really deepen when they're not just for you, when they're for other folks, and especially for a person that you've made. So I think Amara is a real gift to her in that way. Well, you know, I think something that felt really important to me, while Bianca has progressive hearing loss and we knew that, you know, there were facets of, of that that I couldn't understand as someone that's, that's hearing, I think what felt important to us is to not explore that through just me. It felt really important to, to actually have folks that are inside of the deaf community be a part of the experience of these films and also to have that kind of vital representation, which we really get to have with Mila, who plays Amara. And getting to to work with her um, just was so life-changing. I think we, as as hearing folks, sometimes our, our point of view is really biased towards the hearing world. And you know, one part of that is that there's not enough stories that are told that allow us to see outside of our own worldview and reality. And so I'm really inspired by this film, hopefully giving a window for a lot of folks that maybe hadn't considered what a deaf experience might be like, that they might do that through Mila and through the character of Amara. And so for me, it just felt really incredible to get to support that and also just work with such an incredibly gifted young actor, which, which Mila is.